help of me, you knock off. We rolling? Then settle in, class. Apparently, we're learning about the gremlin today. There are ten forms of these fave freaks, and knowing my luck, we'll find them all. You ever wonder what would happen if goblins and kobolds didn't have redeeming charm? You get a bunch of jerks whose golden life is mischief. Except mischief ranges from messing with your stuff to murder at the hands of your loved ones. Destruction and ruin of everything from items to concepts, with each kind having a particular thing they hate. Looks like someone tried to summon Bay in properly, and now they're flocking here like moths. I said I'm sorry. Something that we would never do, of course, because that would get us in trouble. <laughs> That said, they're fully acclimated to our plane, and you can't banish something that already lives here. Speaking of which, we better get moving before Scritz find an auxiliary library. You ready? ready? Ready! Let's go! Oh, and by the way, like and subscribe! Apparently it's better if I say that before most of you are gone. Anyway, first of all, swarming through the holes, we find our most pathetic type, the Midflit. Also known as Mites, they don't even have most of their ancestral magic. They're pitiful, easily bullied, and weren't great with their fellow vermin. They're like a bootleg gremlin, a bootleg of a bootleg. They're weak, but you better take them down pretty quickly. Being wounded or insulted gives them them a bonus to hitting you. That bonus to bullies turns off if they're scared though. Depending on the area, they'll be allied with crabs, scorpions, spiders, they have arthropod specific speak with animals. So with the right ally, they can still pack a punch. Give them a swarm of scorpions or a giant spider, especially something that can grapple or restrain. More chances to use that low health power or run. If they can get their hands on like a titan centipede or something, they can change the game to take out all the gremlins so the monster runs away. It's a good change of pace. This encounter is a more traditional one. A couple big spiders and a bully. Every gremlin can bully them into submission. They actually have self-loading on their stat block because of it. I mean, their only other magic is basically just sharing it. In this case, their bully is a Grimple. All the worst stereotypes of vultures and possums combined, these mangy creatures are absolute grumps. Grimples seek to ruin all the noisy social aspects of culture. Sing-alongs, animal pens, church bells. The Grinch is actually a lice-ridden bat possum. Yeah, lice. You get too close and you might catch them. You can just stay away since they aren't that fast, but they do make up for it with both a climb and a fly speed. And it won't help you too much, they can hit you with rocks or a 30-foot line of vomit. <laughs> with that next time! Quick recharge too, so watch out. It doesn't hurt, it's just gross. They also have the grease spell, so they're pretty good at punishing players who group up. Throw a couple of these out with a swarm of insects or giant spiders to test the party's positioning skill, or some grapplers like a giant crabs to hold people in place while they position. Wait, do you hear that? Student in trouble! Hold up, that might be mimicry. <laughs> Gotta do my job, boss! Okay, yeah, that seems right. Actually, that makes perfect sense. Probably Jenkins. Torture and murder is their forte, but they like capturing people and tormenting them until starvation takes them. They've also... Oh, it's no problem. Wait, this is a university, there shouldn't be kids. Amelia, you don't- Hi, Phoebe of the Future here, and what we just found were Aeronets. Thought we got rid of those in the edition change, but here they are. Their brand of destruction is social connections. They can turn into children at will, produce audio hallucinations, and have some minor mind muddling effects to stop me from seeing through them. They have magical anger, confusion, and most importantly, an aura of gullibility. They get close, and you are toast. Their primary goal is getting everyone around them to fight, then yelling kidnapper when someone sees through their tricks. The more pointless the fight is, the better. And even worse, they get stronger in a group. A pair, like we just saw, can charm an item to make you desperately want it. Once you have it, you're compelled to attack someone with anything at hand. It's why they keep their pockets full of trinkets. Seeing someone try to beat their best friend to death with a rubber chicken is hilarious. But that's only two. If six can find you alone for an hour, they can make you hate someone to the largest degree you're capable of. Whatever your absolute limit is, from slander to murder, is what you'll do. Now, despite carrying spike chains, these aren't really fighters. They should be harassing a party over time, or something they need to hunt down to calm a crowd without getting caught. When you think about it, these can fight players of most levels by just charming powerful monsters when they're asleep. Maybe you can have that be the punishment for failing a mission to hunt him down. They charm the mayor or guard captain. And no matter how you do it, they're a perfect match with Jenkin. Aeronauts love causing fights and are great at luring people, while Jenkin love conflict and making traps. Aeronauts make you take items, Jenkin work together to curse items. Make them unreliable, add weird extra steps to use them, or other little curses of their own design. Like making you do the chicken dance between every swing just to add insult to injury. Even without the Aeronauts combo, they can still sneak attack and are great at making traps. So set up your basic pit traps and tripwires and give them a hellish round one. Oh, and given their love of murder, a haunt would be great. If you're new to Pathfinder, haunts are like ghost traps. They can be disabled for a moment, but they come right back until you put them to rest properly. The phantom footsteps of fleeing victims print in the party for easier stabbing. A child's toy clatters around trying to kill them too. Or a person boarded up in the walls try to drag the party to their tomb. And if the party's a bit too strong for Jenkin, make the haunt's resolution be revenge. Make it a really strong room effect that can only be destroyed by hunting them all down. Like a room that keeps spinning or a monster that keeps coming back until you take out all their tormentors. Anyway, back to the 
aftermath of wrestling Amelia. <sighs> you got that out of your system? Yeah, sorry. Don't worry about it. Hey, boss, you hear that? What? Oh, yeah, that's a lot of them. Oh, sounds too heavy. Wait, where are you going? Somebody dropped gold. Don't run toward the sound. Then convince the boss to pay. Oh, no. Get him! Okay, looks like we got a double creature feature. First and most importantly, we've gotten a Rumbarax. It looks like just a cub, but never underestimate them. They've got more muscle than you can imagine despite their small size. They also like to chew on gold. Well, most metals really, but primarily gold and copper. Hence the nickname Gold Gorger. Eight sets of cast iron claws, vicious teeth, carnivorous, and a personality like a wounded wolverine. Even death takes a few tries to stick. You can train them if you get them as a cub like this, but even then, they have violent tantrums. They're still usually worth it though. They're great at sniffing out precious metals. They also eat rust monsters, so dwarves love them. It seems like it's quarter to Monciello, or maybe it turned on it? Either way, it explains the gold coins. Okay, look, I tried to find pronunciations, but there were only like nine results, and most of them were just talking about the Coluricon. Apparently, they're basically the same thing, just from different regions. Whatever. Monciello target religious buildings, but seem to consider schools to be close enough, or maybe they just don't know the difference. They steal blankets, coins, trinkets, coins, coins, and more with their incredible stealth. They torment staff, putrefy your meals, use hallucinations and illusions. I hate them. Wait, where's my magic? Your blasphemous aura stops you from channeling magic. Just get away from it. A congregation of these can harass a school to death. On the bright side, they're loaded and throw out handfuls of money to cover their escape. That bag they have is a bag of holding, but the magic disappears if it dies or gets separated. The items it took also disappear, so maybe they turn into coins? These things have horrible damage, but don't count them out. They're pretty fast for a gremlin and bulky enough to take hits while turning your magic off for allies. Normally, they ally with rats and snakes, which is fitting thematically, but good allies work with the fundamental mechanics as well. You're looking for creatures who need better accuracy or really get shut down by your party's concentration spells. You can also use them as wonderful bait, working well with trap setter gremlins or ambush monsters like giant vipers. They run away pretty easy and they're no real threat on their own, so they're really just support and annoyances. Unfortunately for the little monk, this one's personal. Anyway, on to the library. Tell us about these script things, boys. Yeah, walk and talk. I've never heard of them before. They're a fairly new kind, or at least they've just now been recorded. They destroy books, art, history, and writing in general. It's the oil on their skin. It's not only full of sickening poison, but it wrecks the concept of knowledge. Even magic writing on wards and glyphs. There's no way to really keep them out except vigilance and violence. And once they've ruined everything, they can eat the book and learn whatever is in it. It's actually how they make friends outside of talking to animals. After they eat the art or whatever, the scripts make skits to mock the author. Walking is barbaric, so I invented foot magic to beat for me. <laughs> actually, I kinda like this one. Baby. Fine. <laughs> They're pretty much harmless on their own. They just poke you with mild toxin and cast grease. The issues come up when other fae wind up liking their antics and protecting them. Often other gremlins, but I can see sprites working well. Things like pixies or malixies peppering you from a range. Worse, however, is that speaking with animals lets them make all sorts of allies. So I usually default to birds. It's nothing more relevant. I've just seen enough birds to know sing-songy prop comedy works right on them. Plus a swarm of these with a swarm of ravens picking apart a library just works. I also like having magical effects happen from the books they're reading. A spell book makes them burp up a living spell or get buffed with haste. A summoning scroll lets them start spitting out tigers. One of them ate a glyph and now they explode when touched. In general, however, you're looking for creatures who benefit most from the party missing and giving them another shot. Low HP, high damage stuff, or anything that forces saves. If you want to get loose with your definition of animal, which a GM is always free to do, Cockatrice works well on both fronts, especially in Pathfinder as an opening encounter, since they might bring the party's speed down to other gremlins' levels. Speaking of which, kind of weird to see them by themselves. We should- <laughs> What are these? They're Vex skin. Guess we're the support gremlins. When you're talking trap makers, these are the worst. Insectoid things that turn anything we build into traps. Everything from weakening chair legs to dismantling entire clock towers. I just got one of these things out of my walls a few weeks ago. They really fight back. They summon traps, press things with a touch, and that mall hits surprisingly hard for something barely up to my waist. Thematically, I like to give them black bears we skinned as dire raccoon, but mechanically they pair with things like Monciello that can lure you into traps. Just have them grab someone's gold and run through the trap gauntlet, batter the party with poison spikes and bait, and they should have traps in addition to whatever they spawn mid-combat. Make them worse than kobolds. They also work great with support criminals like Grimple to assault from a range, and anything relying on inaccurate attacks. That rust will rip shields and armor apart. They're still pretty weak unless you're just starting out, but there's nothing wrong with a basic run. A demolition crew of these could start sweeping through a town, and the party has to rush while they shred through city blocks, dropping buildings on people. Besides, if gremlins are too weak, just make them tougher. The best theory talks about elite monsters, but there's all sorts of a 
adjustments and templates you can use to change or strengthen them. There's also a precedence for gremlins taking class levels. And if you want to make an adjustment quick, just go to monster.pf2.tools, put in the creature level, then adjust the benchmarks to match the relevant stats as closely as possible. Don't change numbers here, just the benchmark. Ability mods, defenses, HP, perception, and spell DC. If it doesn't have a spell but its abilities have a DC, same thing. Also take note of where that attack is in the range. Got it? Now just change the level and everything's perfectly scaled. Now if you have the time to customize, I'd recommend making some new abilities, but if you just want the same thing at a different power level, you can do it in like a minute. Anyway, we all done here? Looks like it, boss. Good. Hey, this portal, do you think it'll be on the upper or the lower floors? Uh, probably lower. Sweet. Feather ball, feather ball, pass it around. I don't like this idea. Time's of the essence, just don't hurt the camera. That's not what I'm worried about. Everyone good? We alive? Oh, mm. Johnny Dance! On it, boss. Tell them how it works. Okay, my guess is we have Nuno around. They live in anthills and control the ants, giving them semi-intelligence and attacking with giant ones or swarms. They're a rare type of gremlin that doesn't actually care about destruction. They're just wise old hermits with secret wisdom. They don't even really like hurting people unless we fell on its anthill, didn't we? Ah, mm. oh, yep. Yeah, Nuno's curse. Horrible pain and swelling and ridiculously hard to undo. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me see if I can bargain with him. Um, you're not gonna get a very complicated bite from them because they shouldn't be fighting to begin with. They only have 3 HP. They're more of a remote quest giver type. You only usually find them if they have rare knowledge your party needs. Apparently they're mostly swayed by fruit, extravagant objects, and people they think are cute. My hand! But they hate conventional beauty. If they do decide to fight, it's probably with straightforward swarms and bull rushes of ants. Maybe make it a really hard fight, but put the Nuno on one of their backs as a win condition? Well, I paid it off, so how come he's healed, but I'm still hurting all over? I, I don't know. That's not a Nuno thing. Ugh, I bet it's a Duende, but they're usually more subtle. What's that supposed to be? They're invisible Earth Bay who learned what landlords are and decided to join the fun. We'll be, be right, right back. back. These things aren't even gremlins, they're just kind of horrifying. They're weird old men who shrink to ant size and set up shop in your home, demanding rent and toenail clippings. If you don't pay up, they'll just take it themselves, but they're so bad at it, they'll lop off your toe. They're also just jerks in general, throwing random items at people and using fear and pain spells if disrespected. Like, they'll make your crops grow better and they'll guard against gremlins, but if you accidentally bump into it while it's invisible in the hallway, you might be better off with a gremlin. I like to use them for mysteries. You're trying to track and reason with one to find out who did a murder, or you're finding out how to put a ghost to rest and it's just one of these being a menace. And if evil, their support spells actually work great with gremlins. They can even make dung look like gold for trap lures. Add some insult to that injury. Either way though, I see what got them riled up. We got Nagriff stomping around. Among the strongest gremlins, these destroy entire homes. Bit by bit too, weakening it until the whole thing collapses when you close the door. They can open that jaw 180 degrees to clamp onto walls, burrow through the earth, and even meld into stone to hide. And they need it since they looked like a goblin head grew arms and legs and wandered off. It's like Kirby ate Jaster Gallywicks, freaking twonky looking jerk. Ugh. They can also create difficult terrain with a stomp, knock you prone if you step into that terrain, and that hammer isn't just for show. The double jaws kinda are though, they don't actually bite you. They do bite rocks, and the more there are, the better they are at nine. You get a group together and the castle's soft as butter. If you don't want to put them with their peers, anything ranged or flying does great thanks to all that difficult terrain. Or have the Nagriff rain death from above. They have speak with animals, so pair them with giant dragonfly and rain death with hammers. You get a hippogriff, one in each claw, and airstrike with gremlins. They have feather fall, they're fine. And if the players give chase, you can always drop a signpost or a roof on them for a trap. Just nothing metal, they don't eat metal, and if they accidentally do, they will torment the surrounding village for generations. That's actually a plot hook for an early session. The town seems haunted, but it's just a nagriff who accidentally ate iron shavings when crushing a blacksmith. Can you stop making up ways to use them and help us get rid of them? If I must. They do have high HP, so they can get away if you're not quick. Camera's running low. Got it, we'll take a rest by the lake to relax and recharge it. Sound good with everyone? It was not good. I don't know how these things even got in land, but welcome to the two aquatic gremlin, Hanover and Bua. Hanover are harmless, just annoying. They don't actually destroy things, they're just curious thieves. They steal items and make a nest of worthless knickknacks and old receipts. Some of the smarter ones will even trade you with broken seashells and such. Issue is, they don't actually care if the item's unattended or being worn, or even part of your body. The given example is they will try to steal a cool shark tooth while it's still in the shark. They just want cool looking treasures and chasing them down only proves that they were right about its value. And even if they don't steal anything from you, they'll still make using your items take longer by messing up your organization. They fly 
I, Swim, have magical beer and ventriloquism. And yes, d and fans, I've brewed a version for you. They're flying fey kinder of the sea who are actively trying to mess with you. Have fun. Wherever you find them, these things are perfect for a snapstick chase sequence. The party has to get something to the mayor, but when they reach down, the thing is gone and a dozen Hanover scatter. But those are the nicest, while the Fuath are some of the most cruel. They take apart ships in the dead of night and eat the stranded sailors one by one. Yeah, no fun and games here, and the sailors who fight back during the attack get hunted down and drowned in the middle of the night. And yes, even on land. They can magically create water and summon a bubble of viscous goo to choke you. This makes them exponentially more dangerous in a group by shutting down all the casters and putting the whole party in a time limit. On the bright side, they don't share a language with any gremlin except Hanover, and though they'll take advantage of each other's chaos, they aren't exactly seeing eye to eye here. One wants to seal your pencil and start a slapstick chase sequence, while the other wants to smash your sail and eat you alive. Real different vibe. They're usually minions for things like sea hags. On their own, they'll train aquatic creatures like Reefclaw to cover their escape, but honestly, I don't think they need help in water. If they did, I'd pair them with Grindy, though, basically being octopus goblins, but they already have plenty of advantages in the water. If you're wanting to be exceptionally effective, I suggest something like the Incutilus. Fuath can cast the sleep spell, and Cuddleus can hijack the body of a sleeping target, ignoring its HP and driving it straight to dying. It is brutal, and together they are horrifyingly effective. Even with less potent pairings, have them strike in the dark or make the ship difficult to rain from a storm. The Fuath's weaknesses are relative frailty and slow land speed, so covering that up with difficult terrain makes for an encounter to remember. Or just make them pirates with a giant eel or an octopus for a ship, it'll be fun! Anyway, let's hop back to where we recharged, bought them off, had our break, and headed back inside. What, you didn't think you'd get to see the break, did you? The coffee fund goes to buying equipment for our show, not a swimsuit photo shoot. Art comes from my own money, not our lovely feral goblin, snake oil, and modern masquerade. Trying to save up for a new microphone. Anyway, we're back. As far as I can figure, the only way that can be this organized is through a Hopkins, which we should have just tracked down. This is it, right? Yeah, there's a hidden room in the back of this one. Okay, here goes nothing. What the f- and who is this? My fall guy, in case it went wrong. He thinks it's his idea. Good girl, now try to keep him monologuing. Healing remorse, minion. Hey, Guck, these ones are half deaf. You can sneak at full speed. On it, boss! These things are Pogwampi, unlucky little dog gremlins. They are so unlucky that it's an aura sharing their misfortune with anyone in 20 feet. Exceptions are animals who they can speak with, and gnolls who they worship. They love causing accidents, people being as unlucky as them so they can laugh at them. Causing avalanches, flooding campsites, tripping people into a latrine, that's their kind of joke. Seeing the gnolls, cackling like fell omens who make the ruins they live in and are immune to their aura, they decided they must be elevated kin. But just their luck, the gnolls hate them even more than everyone else. They can't stand bonding weaklings. So this one's a necromancer, and those generally want people bowing to him, so it kinda cancels out. It's why we have therapy as part of our courses. That is valid, but unfair. Uh, these things will typically be running harassment and support with their aura and surprising archery skill. They ally with good upfront attackers like hyenas and baboons, but if they can, they'll train bloodseekers or sturges. Escaping a grab requires a check, the bad luck aura gives disadvantage on checks, it just makes them more dangerous. You can also try giant crabs in the marsh, or snakes in tall grass. Anything with a good grapple works wonders here. You start with a trap, then if the party chases them, they're led into an ambush. The Pogwampi turn around and help the hyenas or gnolls or whatever rip the party apart. Ugly, boss. Great job. But I got something else to tell the audience, so just relax for a minute. On okay, it, boss. if there's one thing Gremlins highlight, it's that encounters don't have to be standalone. The Vex gets resting will make all later encounters harder. Traps can keep harassing the party long after the Jenkin are gone or just taunting them into overextending and messing up. Every encounter can keep supporting future encounters. I love how some of these get stronger when you have a bunch of the same type, and thinking of ways that others can do that too is a great practice for homebrewing. Their nests are often a big mix of different types, which is why even the offensive gremlins work fantastically with others. It's a great training ground for learning how abilities interact. Yes, you'll struggle to use these past level 5 or 6, but that's fine. They're supposed to be lighthearted fun, perfect for when you're settling in. And with even most of the murderous ones loving humiliation, a party that fails can just take the next session to play new adventurers rescuing them. Not that we'll need it, because I know what comes next. Process of Elimination says that all hell's gonna break loose once we open this undoubtedly rigged door. Future me, narrate this in post. Don't tell me what to do. Whatever, I did need to concentrate. First off, we're the Nug Club. They are one of the tallest gremlins, standing at three feet tall despite that massive hunch. We've talked about them before, pairing them with troll hounds. I stand by it. Troll hounds knock people down, and their sneak attack does extra damage if the target's prone. Knocking people over is what I recommend for pairings, but they do have grease magic and a kneecapper ability to set that up for themselves. Flying partners also work great for avoiding that grease. They're a great summon for lurkers in the night. Flying sneak attackers who share their love of murder. Yeah, Nug Love go for the destruction of life.
Keep it simple. They aren't all that great at traps, but they will set up some basic ones. Their favorite kind are in familiar places like homes and local roads. They want to ambush you where you feel the most safe. They're usually found in groups, but with other types of gremlin. You get more than five or six together and they'll just start fighting and eating each other. They do make temporary exceptions though, primarily with Hopkins. We haven't seen them since the edition change, and if the World's Rebirth decided not to make them, I'd be fine with it. At first, they don't really seem too bad. Sure, they float and phase through ranged attacks, but they have low HP and can't sustain flight. And yeah, they're good at intimidation, but what makes them dangerous is their destruction specialty. They don't just like destroying everything you love, they like making you do it. For a normal Hopkins, this means redirecting your Mr. Weak attacks. Creatures like Nug Club that make it harder for people to hit are particularly useful, and trap makers like Vex that are nice because these things are planners. Their true strength is organization and keeping other gremlins in line. When these are around, the town is trapped like a kobold's dream. Notice, however, that I said normal Hopkins. While some gremlins grow stronger by taking class levels, the Hopkins turns into the Hopkins Malefactor. While their natural psychic powers enhance considerably, the real issue is that they can telepathically bond with the entire nest. Now able to organize everyone at once, they go on a power trip. We go from making kids smash their toys in fear to making a panicked mob slaughter each other. It's still not that strong in the grand scheme of things, but that's fine. The fight comes from the gauntlet to get to it and tracking it down with so many eyes and ears. At this point of infestation, low-level adventurers might not cut it. Thankfully, our group was up to the task. Hopefully by now you've seen that gremlins will harass your party to no end. There's one for every occasion, and if not, they're pretty fun to homebrew. And I would know, I just made like, what, 17? Just check the description below for links to your missing Pathfinder gremlins and D&D 5e conversions for them all. Even the Duende and the Gold Gorger, and all free of charge. So if you like the monsters and want to leave a tip, the copy link is down there too. I really need to work out some rewards for that, but for now I just let you know how Modern Masquerade, Snake Oil, and Feral Goblin are awesome. Class dismissed. Okay, but seriously, what happened? I didn't have a unicorn horn for a focus, so I tried painting a chocolate cornet. You tried to trick magic with a pastry? <laughs> Never mind then, I'm proud. I can't wait to teach you about magical counterfeiting, but what were you trying to get the pay for? Find a unicorn. Why? I need the horn. <laughs>